All right, greetings everyone. Tonight is May 10th and this is our Ghana Tour and Investment Preparation October 2015 conference call. And our time duration is from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, greetings Caroline, I got you on the call. Oh, okay, thank you. How are I, you? I'm doing well, we're, uh, we're actually just getting started like right now. I know, but this is Mother's Day. <laughs> All right. And uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of the world. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome. And thank you for taking time out to join us on this call. Uh, in America, every uh, every other week is a holiday, so it's hard to schedule things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is our Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour conference call, and our date is May 10th, 2015. And this is our the fifth segment of our conference call. We did the first one December 2014, January 5th, 2015, February, and the last one was March. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go over the overview of certain things that we have covered, but uh, we're gonna just open more things to talk with everyone about you know, all the information they have went over and to see where everybody is at so we can just have a more relative uh, conference call and talk to, for those who are actually ready to go. All right, so the purpose of this conference call is to communicate with everyone that's interested in the tour itself and to share information about all the need to know and to get everyone connected. Uh, I'm going to skip uh, introduction and just going to kind of limit it. As far as our Africa tours, I've been traveling to Africa uh, since uh, 2004 and from 2004 to 2006, traveled to six different countries, and one of them was Ghana. And for me, Ghana was, you know, Ghana, you know, Ghana had the the program as far as putting together a tour that represent us reconnecting to our roots. So this is what you have: our Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, and this is our tenth segment of our Journey of a Lifetime Tour. And what I look to do over the, the years is this make every journey better and take you know, all the, the wonderful things from the past journeys and work the logistics of how those things worked out to make you know the journey better and better every year and we have Kofi Bruce who have traveled with me twice already to Ghana and looking to come yeah. back for the third time and yes, yes. it's always better just to find out from those who have traveled before how you know how the progress of our operation has been so Later on, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that you have a few minutes to share your experience and you know, let others know, you know, how you, you know, how you got addicted to traveling to Africa. Okay, no problem. <laughs> e excellent. So this year, um, this year, uh, Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour is October 28th to November 10th. And uh, what we look to do is we arrange a, most, arrange a schedule for us to all connect in Amsterdam, but the majority of us are still going to meet there in Atlanta. And once we meet in Atlanta, we're going to be doing a lot of this, you know, networking, brief introduction, and also we're going to be passing out our tour promo supplies, which is the tour book, tour t-shirt, pens, and also bags. So as you see, we have talked about over the over the last few months, all of the documentation for the trip itself is on the link that say Ghana Tour October 2015. So from the uh, the tour overview to the general terms to the itinerary, we have you know went over certain things on it. And what I want to find out from in the next few minutes is you know I want to get some good questions as far as the uh, itinerary and what everyone you know, thinks about it and. You know that way we can just kind of see you know see where everybody's at, and on to, on past that I uh, want to get into the visa. So cause right now we're in the middle of you know, actually looking to get everybody to start the visa process. So I'm here on our website and I'm gonna open things up because I want today to be more interactive. I want to get some questions of those from you know from one or two people about the uh, itinerary and the tour overview. Um, if everything flows good, looks good, and just any general questions. All right, let me select somebody. All right, Omar, have you seen the itinerary for our Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour? 
that I have. Um, I don't have the information in front of me. But uh, prior to us speaking, I did go over it, um, so I read everything. It seemed pretty straightforward, so at this point, I don't have any questions. All right, excellent. And what we have, we have the uh, tour itinerary breakdown in four different uh, sections, four different regions. We spend the first few days in the capital city. When we're in the capital city, the main thing that we're looking to do is we're looking to do our, our Pan-African uh, city tour. The Pan-African aspect of the tour represents us going to the uh, memorial of W.E.B. Du Bois, Kwame Nkrumah, and George Padmore. We also get a chance to do a great uh, business and investment conference that, uh, that opens up the world as far as those of us living, looking or have interest to live and do business in Africa. That part of that, so that's our, our, our city, you know, brief city segment. One of the important things that we're looking to do in, you know, right after that, we're looking to take a long ride up to the Brong Afo region. And you're looking at a, about us, we estimate it right now about, about anywhere from minimum seven to about a nine hour ride. So we're going to have, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of preparation for that. And a lot of preparation is us limiting our liquid drinking. And just having you know more things on the bus as far as you know, meals and everything that we we avoid you know unnecessary stops. Uh, nevertheless, uh, any emergency, we always tell everyone to let the tour guide know, and you'll get the driver to stop the bus. Uh, we also will be sharing a different. We'll be playing different documentaries on the bus. The bus does have a right now the bus size that we have, which fits about 30 of us, which which is perfect for our group size of 21. It has um, one TV and everything else, our standard uh, DVD player, microphone. So we'll be able to play a few documentaries, have discussions, and just you know use that also to work the time and be more interactive. And most of the things that we're looking to play is very, very relevant to the journey itself and also to you know, repatriation and living and doing business in Africa. And on our way to the Brongafa region, our main stop is we're, we're going to be spending two days uh, networking. And our host there is uh, Sister Nunette, and she has a beautiful Echo Village. And she has a lot of wonderful programs and a lot of uh, opportunity for those who are looking to build more sustainable and look to get out the city life and come more up into you know, the center of the country. So... But give us a chance to go somewhere where we have never been before, somewhere where it's more into nature. So that's perfect for our growing part of the program, which we're looking to get more people, you know, looking to demonstrate or share more aspects of how you can acquire land. And also want to take you to a place where those of us that used to live here in the diaspora live there now in Ghana, and they live in different uh, sections or different parts of the country. So you're going to be visit, getting a chance to visit and meet a lot of our people who you know, live in different parts of Ghana at the same time. The third aspect of our tour is we're going to Kumasi and in Kumasi we go to a lot of the craft villages so usually we encourage, you know, we encourage, encourage everyone to do a lot of shopping. There's so many great things you get for a great price. We go to the art center, wood carving village, and we go to Entanso, which where you can get the Adinkra stamps. Uh, you can buy the cloth and make your own uh, cloth with different Adinkra stamps. So it's very interactive. You also get to go to the uh, Kente Cloud factory itself, and this nice tour over ni nice tour around uh, Kumasi. Very, it's the second largest city and uh, very busy. Um, not as you know, crazy or busy as Accra, but uh, it's up there. So that's the uh, third area we go to, which is the Ashanti region, main point Kumasi. Our final stopping point is going to be in the central region and we go to three parts of the central region. We go to Asin Manso where it's where where it's it's a where we, we learn about where our ancestors took our ancestors took their last bat before they were taken to the Holocaust dungeons. Then we uh we also we also get a chance to go to Cape Coast and Elmina dungeon. It's a long day tour. But that's the two main cities in two areas where it's, where the biggest dungeons house our people. All right, welcome to the conference call. Uh, we're in the middle of the call. Uh, this hold for questions. Yeah, it's Brother Jerry. All right, greetings, Jerry. Welcome to the call. All right. So while we're in the uh, while we're in the central region, 
We also go to. If you ever see any of the videos where we do the canopy walk, that's where we at the central region. So it's a lot of different things in the central region. It's the itinerary is actually filled with a lot of different things. So that's why I ask everybody to make sure they look through the itinerary and see all the wonderful things we do and you know, kind of drop any questions and everything. So nice, wonderful program that does give you a good feel for the country. And one of the things I want everyone to know is that if you like to stay longer or like to get there earlier, just let me know ahead of time. Like, I mean, a few months ahead of time, like right now will be a good time so we can adjust the the dates of the tickets i try to offer as flexible op options as possible and when you while you're there if you need if, you know if you're you're looking to focus on certain things just you know communicate with us and let us know so we can help you at best and, but other than that uh, we recommend everybody to just go with the flow of the tour and you know by this time that's why we do our best to just cover all the need to know and just try to answer as many questions as possible because once we get on the journey, it's you know it's just fast paced, and we, in order for us to you know really just get the best of it, we just have to be really you know prepared and ready. All right. So next set of things I want to talk about is the visa process. Can I have um, a I have one question. This is Carolyn. You know, as we go to these different places, uh, are we just taking all of our luggage with us, or just what we need for those places? You know, good question. Uh, logistics, the way it works is I have a, a tour bus that takes around, us around everywhere we go. So once we leave from, once we leave from like Accra and we're on our way to the Brown Hafo region, right. we take everything that we have and pack it in the coach bus. That's why we have a nice big fancy bus. Okay. That way it can fit all of our luggage. luggage. Okay. And your biggest luggage asset is going to be the, the two check-in bags of 50 pounds, right. which is... You know, which, you know, we make sure we compensate for everyone bringing, you know, a lot of luggage. Right, but then we'll leave our school supplies when we get to the mountain region at this uh, Trinity Home Foundation School. Is yes, uh, that's one of our three destinations we have that uh, will be... So we'll leave some school supplies there? We're going to be, yeah, we're going to be collecting the school supplies uh, within the first few days and then we're going to be distributing them at all three schools and then we're also going to be collecting oh, okay. financial okay. donations when we go to the schools. Okay. But the, the main thing is once we have, you know, once we have our bags on the bus, the next location we go to, we check into the hotel and we just, we settle, with, you know, we're usually there for about two to three days so we can just kind of settle okay. in and everything and then we're then. You know, that day we go, we usually just settle in, and when we're ready to head out, we just we just drive them without, you know, we just drive them doing a normal, you know, tour day. So okay. the bus itself is going to be with us the whole time on tour. Oh, okay. And the same sequence is every two, three days, you're, you know, you pack and move, pack and move. But I, okay. the, the best thing about it is you get a you get a good chance to see the countryside of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Get into nature away from the mad city. All right. Uh, as far as visa, I want to find out who has gotten their visa completed and did they have any issues or uh, was the process complicated? And want you know, one or two people to share the process of okay. of what they did to attain their visa. Well, my name is Carolyn, and I did get my visa. Okay, I applied for the multiple visa, and I got it for one year. Uh, because for one thing, my passport is going to expire May 9th of next year, so my visa is for one year. And uh, it took me maybe about hmm, maybe about 10 days to get it, but it wasn't any problem. So I had a chance to track my uh, UPS. I sent it by UPS, but the uh, envelope inside was uh, United Post Office Post Office uh, pay, and because it was much cheaper that way instead of sending them both UPS, so it was cheaper for me that way. But I did get it back, and I am really, I was like ecstatic when I got it back because uh, it looks nice in my passport. So. All right, excellent, perfect. Well, well, thank you. We'd just like to you know, check with different people to make sure that the process that we have for the, the visa email is, is clear and everything. And you know, everybody reads directions different. So if anyone's having any trouble or not clear on certain things with the visa, you can call me and I'll help you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but the main thing I want everyone to at least do is to take a, is to print out all of the details from the email and at least look through, through it once or twice. That way when we c communicate, things will be a lot more clearer. 
Hi, this is Lori. Can I just ask, uh, Carolyn, did you say that you rented UPS and then you had a return? Well, when I went to yeah, when I went to UPS, I had the big envelope with all my, you know, important information. I sent that by UPS, but inside your envelope, you're supposed to have a return envelope okay. to get your passport back and everything. So you yes. have to pay for that in advance. So I did that right at UPS Place, but I did it U.S. Postal System. Okay. Much cheaper, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent, uh, Carolyn. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions about the visa process, or does did everyone I'm trying to find out? I guess it's hard for me to find out who looked at the visa information or not. But I just want to make sure everybody's got the information. And right now is a good time for questions or. I have a question. Sure, go ahead. So is, um, I sent my visa application off. It's been about three weeks, and I actually input a self-address um, stamped uh, return label in it. Does it have to be certified, or it can just be paid posted? Certified. It has to be certified so you can track it. Because remember, your passport's going to be in there. Yeah, it need to be. It need to be. Um, it need to have a. Tra it need to have a tracking system. Yeah, tracking. Or or, or some kind of certified mail. Yeah. So, but nevertheless, if you send it off okay. and it has postage, it will. They'll still I don't send it back. I think the instruction said pay postage. It don't say certified pay postage. Now, what I put is the word tracking. Uh, put a, put a prepaid return label with tracking. So, but nevertheless, if you, regardless, of, as long as you put a return envelope in there, it will come back. But uh, the, the the thing I'm try, what, what I try to do is for you to do tracking. That way, you can track your package back. Because as soon as the post office get it on the return, they'll scan it, and then once they scan it, that tracking number is activated in the system, and now you can track it on the way back to you. But nevertheless, only issue with your 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 package now is that you know you won't be able to track it, but it'll it'll get back to you soon. And if it takes longer than a, a month or so, you can, or longer than two weeks, you can reach out to the embassy, because there's been situations where the proper prepaid return envelope was not put in the package, and they held the the package until the person called and paid for a package for it to be sent. Good morning. Yes, go ahead. Hey, this is Ron. I, uh, I work at the Postal Service, so for all of you who are sending anything to the Postal Service, if it's important to you, you always have a tracking number. I don't care whether it's a passport, any legal document, always get a tracking number, whether it's certified uh, priority mail. And make sure you get a tracking number on anything that's important that goes to the U.S. Postal Service. Excellent. That's, that's a great advice. Hi, this is Elizabeth. Uh, in the next two weeks, I plan to begin my process. I have been reading all the email and information, and I familiarized myself with that. So, does everything on the email I sent to you, as far as the uh, the details for um, the visa, does everything is everything clear? Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. It's easy to follow. All right. All right. That is that is perfect. So. So uh, I'm going to pass, because uh, the last few months we've been talking a lot about the visa and everything, so I just want to make sure everybody's good to go on that, so that's perfect. The next set of things we talk about is the preparation, uh, Ghana culture, customs, uh, what to pack and what to bring. There's a list that I have attached to the conference call, emails, called Departure and Reminder List. And that list is designed to just give you all of the details on what to pack, what to bring, and what to be prepared for. So I wanted to find out if anyone have any questions directly from that list and or want to talk about anything as far as their preparation. Well, I know, uh, this is Carolyn again. I did, you know, I had an appointment with my doctor, so I asked her about the malaria right. and the tetanus and, um, what was the other shot? Uh, the diarrhea medicine. And she did tell me where I could go for the yellow fever, so... Shot. So I have an appointment tomorrow to go for the yellow fever shot. All right, that is perfect. So you're you're getting things in order little by little, and you don't have to do everything all at one time. And what you're doing is perfect. You're pacing yourself and doing, you know, knocking things out little by little. Because before you know it, it's October and it's time to go. 
All right, I'm looking through the uh, the preparation and reminder list. One of the things I have on there is the Delta Airlines uh, e-ticket. In the next um, the next uh, three months, we're going to be finalizing and closing on the on payment for all of the tickets, and we'll, everyone will have access to log into the system. If you have a if you have a Sky Miles number, you can add a Sky Miles number. If you don't, you can I guess you can just register for a Sky Miles number, but in order to get credit for the you know the flight time, which is a long flight, it's uh, we're doing flight segments from like Atlanta to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Ghana and back. And also, uh, once you log into the Delta E ticket, you're able to you know you're just able to just have full access to your you know your ticket details. You can update your um, emergency contacts. You can you can add special services, change seat and just have detailed flight information ahead of time so it's just a, a way to just get you, you know, prepared for your, your flight ahead of time yeah. and as you can see that's, that's the process of how we do everything it's one of those things where we can't afford to do certain things in the last minute because things will catch up to us and the time go by now, right now I have everyone flight that's flying into Atlanta or leaving, have a meet, the meet and greet at about four o'clock. So all of the flights are going to be getting in around that time, and we're going to be meeting. For those who are on the west coast, your flight will go directly to Amsterdam, and we can meet everyone. I guess around twelve o'clock, uh, which is about two hours before the flight leave the following day, October 29th. So one of the things is we want to make sure everybody is clear on the itinerary. The itinerary gives the full flight details of our schedule of how we're leaving and coming back. So make sure you're familiar with that. Uh, but does anyone have any questions about their flights or anything dealing with the traveling on Delta Airlines baggage? Right, and as we talk about baggage, there's uh, two check bags with uh, 50 pounds that's what you're allowed so you should tell everyone to put all your personals in one bag and put the things that you're looking to get rid of including school supplies in another bag that one when you shop or you buy or whatever you get access to you want to bring back you have an empty bag that you can put up to about 50 pounds in it and you're good to go And as I talk about uh, school supplies, if you have any friends or family members who just have any interest in the, the, the program, th any kind of basic light school supply, the things that, that, that don't weigh a lot, uh, pens, calculators, uh, rulers, scientific equipment, that's not like heavy, you know, heavy books or paper, those just eat up all your, you know, your weight on the, in the you wait on your baggage. All right, um, also, I talk about things like uh, mosquito spray and just bringing you know, basic things for all your electronics, your adapters, converters, plastic bag, alarm clock, travel iron. So the list is just very detailed. And you know, over the last few times we did conference call or conference call was very long because we went into a lot of the information. So right now I'm just kind of this. You know, breezing, you know, just going over, just jumping through and going through all the different lists and different things that we have. And I'm looking, you know, at any time anybody have any questions, uh, let me know. This, I'm doing this so you can, so I can generate some questions from, you know, the list, the list and different things I sent you. Since, like I said, unfortunately we can't get to all of it. It's going to be a short call. Uh, this is, this is, this is Irv, and I just, uh, I just tuned in. I have a question about visa. Uh, Green Zervin, uh, uh, what's, your, what's your question about visa? Uh, I, I, it might have been answered already. I just tuned in. That's fine. I read in some of the li uh, literature that your uh, photo for your visa app shouldn't be more than three months old. Is that correct? Your hotel, repeat that one more time. I'm concerned about the photo visa. The photo that when you apply for your visa on the application. Yeah, I mean, when you're ready to up, when you're ready to apply for your visa, you get your passport size photos and just get them fresh. If you had them for a few months, for a few months ago, you can still use them. Nobody's gonna know if you took them a few days ago or a few months ago. I've used photos that was taken two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Yeah, but um, but yeah, I can see your concern. You want to make sure everything is good in your package, and that's that's fine. Um, uh, do you have everything printed out for the uh, the visa information I sent you? Yes. Uh, the only thing I have to do now um, is uh, mail it. I, I'm going through uh, the post office right now. Uh, with the, um, I guess it's a, uh, I don't know. Do party, do, do party mail. Do party mail. And yeah. I included our return envelope already stamped on there that I'm sending in with my other information. So I'm good to go. All I have to do is mail it. That's perfect. Mail it. That's all I have to do. That's perfect. And you have the and flight itinerary. Check in there. And you have and the flight. Check. I've got that. You have the check. You have the flight itinerary in your bank statement. Uh, I have all of that. Yes. Oh, cool. Excellent. You're good to go then. That is perfect. And right mm -hmm. now is the perfect time for everybody to start either processing their visa. Remember everybody if you're going to do a visa now, make sure it's multiple entry. But if you if you only want to do sin single entry, just do single entry visa the beginning of September. And the single entry visa is only, is only good for th 3 months. And it only give you one entry into Ghana. Once you leave Ghana, it's the finish. Multiple entry give you multiple entry into Ghana continuously up until the expiration date. Okay. So perfect. Um, let me uh, move to the next set of things we're talking about, uh, which is the uh, departure and reminder list. Is a list of things on there. Um, also, we recommend that um, that everyone bring as much cash as you think you're gonna need. And we do make stops to, you know, to the ATMs um, every other day. And if you need to just make a special run, we can always get one of our assistants uh, to take you out. So you're never, you know, you're never stuck um, without getting access to machine or banking. But uh, Ghana is, you know, it's still a, it's still a primarily cash country. So most of the things are pretty much done in cash. So bring lots of cash. About four to eight hundred depends on what you're looking to spend. And what you can do is when we first get to the airport, there's a fort area where you can exchange your money, and that's one place that gives you a, a decent uh, rate for your money. Bring hundreds and fifty dollar bills, the big bills, because you get more for your money. That's the way the system works. <laughs> Yeah, I, was, I, I got a question. Um, this is Jerry here in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, yeah, um, the universe, uh, I mean, uh, the Bank of Africa that I've seen, I was, you know, been looking at on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, where you talking about the interest rates and stuff like that. Um, once you open the account in Africa and, you know, you come back, can you still send money to, to the bank while you over here in America? Yes, you can transfer money from your bank, your business, your account here to your account there, and it'll just be a wire transfer from your bank account here. And while you're in Ghana, you process your account, you get all the swift codes, get all the numbers and everything you need to make that happen. Okay, okay. So, but you you have to open it there, though. Am I correct? Yes, you have to open it there. Okay. Okay. So, I'm sorry, Bomani, this is Lori. Go ahead, Lori. Yeah, so you said, um, you know, like you said, you bring like a, a 800 to to $1,000 when you get to the airport. There's stairs where you can transfer the money to Ghana. You can do the exchange, the money exchange there. Yeah, what I was talking about is uh, when, you're, when you were traveling and you're carrying your cash, you want to just convert... You want to convert you know, some of it right away when we get right to the airport in Ghana. They have a the transfer place right there. But the other thing I was talking about was the gentleman was talking about opening an account, a bank account. And then once you open your bank account in, in, there in Ghana, you can transfer money from your bank account in America to Ghana and request for your banker to do investment in treasure bills, stocks or bonds or whatever you agree on. So that was two different things we're talking about with funds. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. You are welcome. I have and a question. Sure. Go ahead with your question. 
Uh, okay, now the uh, Bank of Africa, is it, a, will it be a convenient bank? Like, um, do they have, I guess, different locations or maybe one or two or, you know, locations that you could stop at or is, are they, um, is it just probably like one bank over there or... Yes, yeah, popular. It it's a regional bank. It's popular this, throughout the African continent, uh, mainly in West Africa, and mainly in uh, Ghana and Nigeria. So as we're looking okay. to do things in Ghana, it's very convenient in Ghana. Okay. And um, I guess I can type it in the Google Chrome and see if it's a pretty reputable bank. I guess it would be. Yeah, I recommend you. you we, we do our research on everything that we, you know, everything that you're dealing with. But yeah. um, it's um, it's as top notch of a bank as a top notch bank is. Okay. So, so it's one of the leading banks in uh, Africa, and it's uh, pretty much a Pan African bank. Oh, okay. And it's um, the organization is dominated by Ghanaians and Nigerians. Mhm. Mm okay, that works. Right. Absolutely. And all right, let me uh, flip past this list. All right, we have two segments where we talk about bring different set of clothing. When we go to the Holocaust dungeons, uh, we actually want to bring a set of uh, white clothing uh, for the entire day. We're going to be going to Cape Coast and Elmina Holocaust dungeon. We're also going to be doing a naming ceremony on the beach, either in the morning or in the nighttime there at One Africa. So it's going to be a memorable day. When we go to a location called Asin Manso, and if anyone is not clear what Asin Manso is, let me know. It's also called a last bath. It's where our ancestors took their last bath before they were taken to the dungeons. We usually do a set of red, black, and green clothing from Kumasi. And this is just ancestral celebration and just paying homage to our ancestors and just us just doing a program to reconnect to our roots. So... Uh, you just do your best you can do as far as the white and the combination of red, black, green, and gold, which is the uh, Ghanaian color, Ghanaian colors. And uh, earlier I talked about the uh, Repatriation Investment Conference. It's um, it's a two-hour segment. Um, the second day when we get to Ghana, and then the night before we actually uh, leave, we get to do another one. And it has a lot of wonderful presentations by people who used to live here that's been living there and going back and forth and doing business. So definitely want you know everyone to to take the opportunity to just interact as much as possible and just take in all the valuable information. It's um, it's you know very powerful uh, you know presentation that different people do. Because you know, who knows better how you know how the experience of living and doing business than those of our people and those of those are our people that are living there, that are repatriated. Those are the people that you have to really connect to, because those are the people that have the same understanding as you, as far as you know what your your purpose and the reason for connecting there in Ghana. Someone local might not necessarily have the understanding and might just see you as someone a foreigner coming to you know coming to Africa. Yeah, so. We also do our best to you know, share with our people the purpose and what we you know what we're looking to do. The reconnection, unfortunately, is not a situation where the government educate the people in the country that Africans in the diaspora were taken away from their homeland, and and then many of them are looking to reconnect to their roots, and you have to look at them as brothers and sisters. So that level of education is not in place. So. I tell everyone just uh, you know be open and be patient with uh, certain people that you deal with, and you know and it's, you know it's a learning process for those of us reconnecting, and those of our brothers and sisters there, you know, waiting for us to reconnect. All right, I want to open things up. Um, we're going to be closing in the next 15 minutes. I want to really just get questions and really get uh, feedback from everyone, and definitely people who have joined the calls the last few months and I've looked through the information. Alright, so I'm going to start reaching out to a few people. Ron Newby, uh, can you hear me? Alright, Kofi Bruce, you still online? Yeah, I'm still here. Yes, Alright, perfect. Alright, Kofi, um, uh, this, is your, this, this is the th third journey that you're looking to uh, come on. What makes you want to come back for a third time? 
Oh, well, for me, you know, I love Africa, period, you know. And um, it just keep calling me. I can't stay away, basically. All right, excellent. Now, what's been your, 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 what's been your best memory or the best aspect of the tour itself? Um, like being there well, in Ghana? Everything, every, everything, everything has been fine, but the best thing is the people of Ghana. You know, actually getting to network with the, the people on the ground and, and talking to them. Like you said, the government over there don't uh, educate the people on us coming back over there. So you basically have to do it yourself. Right. But um, for anyone that's on the line that has never been to Africa, the, the best thing that you can take over there with you is your attitude. So if you bring a good attitude, you'll have a good time. Trust me. No problems. I like that advice, uh, and it goes back to what I talk about. It's all about what you, uh, you know, what you put in. If you you put good energy in, and if you get yourself prepared, and if you get yourself to a point where you're coming with an open mind, you're gonna just, you know, it's you're gonna just have a wonderful uh, journey. Yeah, so it's it's all about uh, what you're willing to put into it. So, family, I'm gonna reach out to a few uh, people since everyone is being shy. Oh, Sean, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Are you ready for the journey? Is Has everything been clear as far as uh, the tour details for you to be ready to make a commitment? Um, yeah, as, as much as I can, I can, um, you know, kind of uh, keep up. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm still preparing mentally. Yeah, but I do plan to make the journey. All right, excellent. That sounds good. And so, do you have any, do you have any uh, hard notch uh, questions or any concern or anything you'd like to talk about or share with any, everyone? Um, no, not yet. I'm, I'm still taking it in and um, getting excited um, more and more. I listen to it, so I'm still like I, uh, digesting the um, idea and seeing myself there too. Right, so how has the videos been for you, the ones that we actually shoot in Ghana and actually be, and we're actually there in Ghana? Does it bring you closer to? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It's still kind of far. Um, I don't know if I'll say far-fetched, but, you know, I'm still kind of digesting it all. Excellent. All right, uh, Lori, can you hear me? Irvin. No, no, I got you, Irvin. Got your number locked okay, in. Okay. Yes, I'm here. I'm already. All right, just uh, reaching out to you. Um, I recently just sent you a few uh, the emails. Um, how does everything look as far as the uh, details that I uh, sent you the updates? Yeah, everything looks great. Uh, you know, I'm excited. Looking forward to you know getting on my stuff done. So sending out my uh, my passport or my visa. And then um, the rest of the uh, the information, as far as like <clears throat> prepping with uh, what has to be, what I'm gonna bring, as far as wearing and uh, getting my shot. I right, cool, yeah. perfect. But I but I did have uh, you know a question, and you know I mean nothing that that. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm putting a damper on anything, <laughs> but I read the story about the two sisters that was uh, was killed there. And I, you know, I don't know whether the details was that, you know, they had land there and, you know, the folks didn't want them to. Yeah, I, I knew, I knew, I knew um, it was. unfortunately, I know the, everybody in the parties from the person. I, I knew, because we, that, that was a part of our actual journey. We'll go to the eastern region, so I know all of the people that were involved, the ones that are locked up in jail for what they did. And the ones mm. that were the ones that got slaughtered, and it, it wow. breaks it breaks my heart. I'm here with my sister Imakus, and we've been grieving over it. This has been painful because yeah. it's like we've been working for the last ten years trying to get people to commit to living and doing business and building land there, um, building projects, and kind of building a real diaspora community where we can just mm -hmm. have a place for ourselves where we can just you know, and it's. It's the scene that and it's, it's kind of seen all the things that you work for this collapse, um, but unfortunately, we won't be going to that region uh, before all these things happen. I removed it from the itinerary because of last year. It's 
because of last year there's a certain instigation between one or two of the parties that just didn't like being put in the middle, you know? Um, you know, for me, it's but about is, me. That, is that something that's just isolated over there, meaning like if, if somebody wanted to come over and get land, is it that some of the people in that area just do not want outsiders to come in and have land? You know? Yeah, and it wasn't really the outsiders, it was the brothers and sisters from the diaspora, it was the two that I killed were, you know, our people from yeah. here, and then the, the people who did it were, there were our people from here, and they, everybody was all cool, everybody was all friends and everything, mm -hmm. but the it's it's been you know it's different factions want control over that land that was given to our people to build right. a community and one party's complaining that this is not being developed or you're taking too long or you're not managing and it's just a lot of back and forth and everything will be perfect if everybody just put aside that and actually work together and but nevertheless uh, i'm looking to build a great relationship with our sister nunet there in the bronx Afo region and okay. she's going to lay out different land programs as far as options for sta sustainable living. So it's one of those painful things, but I, I've actually just I kind of moved on before this incident happened. And just mm -hmm. made a decision to just keep moving forward and just let it go and just call it a loss. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so apologize everyone to sharing those bad news. and But nevertheless... Uh, I really feel like what we have there in the Brangafo region and that connection with the sister um, is going to really just open up a lot of opportunities for those of us who really want to get a chance to live inland in Ghana. Right, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to, hopefully. Yeah. And I, you know, that's where my concern came in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and appreciate you, you know, bringing that up and I'm glad I was able to give some level of uh, clarity to that because it's a lot of stuff going on around on Facebook and you know rumors spread quick <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah okay yeah. thank you oh uh, you're welcome all right uh we're still this the floor is open for questions for anything anyone wants to talk about for the next um eight minutes uh this is a short uh, conference call versus the long ones we have had in the past I feel like we've covered a lot so now this it's just really time to to have an open floor and talk Hello everyone, this is Darnell. Um, I apologize for earlier. I did check my information and it, it was a self-addressed certified um, letter, but I need to um, contact them because it's been three weeks, it, not 10 days. It's been three weeks, so I'm going to make sure I, I emailed them a few minutes ago and so no, make sure I get it back or hear something back from them. All right, and there's no return tracking on that, right? There's no, there's, when you check the tracking, there's no activity, right? Correct. All right, correct. Right, them to see yeah. what the status. Yeah, so it's probably just there on hold. So perfect. You did, you did the right thing, which is send an email, so you should get a reply back um, by the um, by Monday, Tuesday. And so the visa is the main thing. Also, beyond the visa is a yellow fever shot. Everyone will need a yellow fever card or a yellow fever waiver to enter Ghana. Uh, does everyone have a passport? Or is any or do we have anyone still waiting for a passport or still need to do a pass still need to get a passport? All right, cool. So we all clear. Everybody's clear. And also, once you get your visas, give me a call or um, text me uh, or something. I just need to verify that you you're, you know you, we have a you have an expiration date on your passport that's not going to expire before you go to Ghana. Meaning that you have a multiple entry. All right, I'm just gonna go to a few things and then we're gonna close. All right, uh, some of the special reminders I want everyone to know is that uh, Ghanaians are very friendly. However, be wary of people who want to just make quick money off you and make promises they cannot keep. You should know as much as possible about the people you're planning to do business with. The Vijawara and his Africa Up Consulting Group is our repatriation and investment conference host. They are the ones we recommend you do business with in Ghana or consult with at least. And that's the base on many and many uh, incidents. Um, we have people who feel like they can be here in America and meet people over the internet, um, Facebook, wherever. And or just get some a referral from somebody that say that they got gold deals and they got all of these things and and so on and so on, 
And next thing you know, you're, you're out of a, a few thousand dollars. You know, I tell people, might as well just take the journey, check out the country. And all of the people that uh, we've been dealing with for the last 10 years, they're, they're open to doing business with you and making sure that everything works out for you because the more of our people that comes in and do things and it, it, it progresses, it, it betters all of us. The more people come and fail and things don't work out, it just it destroys what we're building. So it's in our interest for all of us to you know be successful and for all of us to look out for each other. So I usually tell everyone, don't give anybody any money when you get there. Um, and what I mean by that is, um, somebody tell you that they, uh, they they got a they got a half acre land for for you know for five thousand dollars things like that or they got a they got an office space for you to rent um, at two hundred dollars a month for five years or so on or just anything that's just strange just you know you're not there to you know do that for the most part if you're there to do anything it's field research uh, but uh, with the exception of making any you know any level of our uh, commitment. So those, you know, a lot of strange and wild things have happened. So I usually have to just keep this sharing that, um, and hopefully that can prevent someone that was willing to be trustworthy and just do certain things in the country to not do it. Another thing I want to talk about also is for everyone to please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Don't get uh, distracted by others or get caught up into complaining. And that's one of the worst things that someone can do. Is this? You know, you you know, you come on a journey like this. Everything is well organized and prepared, and you haven't been following what we've been talking about. And you come there and you irritate yourself. You know, so it's you know the journey is laid back. I have plenty of staff and plenty of people that just travel and and, that are, and people that are with us as we go along that can help and you know that can you know get you any special things that you need if you you know you're looking to you know to not just like do the quote unquote everything that we do on that itinerary you need some time to do some things you know communicate and uh, my goal is to keep the journey as flexible as possible uh, that way everybody gets uh, beyond their money's worth and be able to just you know get the best of uh, your investment so one thing I want to uh, let everyone know is uh, when you come and, and, and visit, do not come with a romanticized notion about uh, Ghana slash Africa or you will be disappointed. Uh, come with an open mind and open energy. And that's you know, basically what I'm saying and you'll get the most out of that. And this is just based on you know, me taking, me traveling with over 100 different, 80, 180 different people with 180 different personalities and maybe, you know, maybe a few out of the 180, you know, didn't exactly enjoy the best journey as 95% or 99% of the, the, the people on the journey. But that's all in preparation. Um, I try to make sure we have all of our details up on the site and things to where you can just get a feel and build, build energy. All right, I'm gonna stop right there on uh, my special reminder list. I'm just uh, reading off a few things. I wanna open things back up for uh, questions. Uh, before we close in the next minute. Um, based on any of the things I've talked about on the special reminder list, uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, William, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. All right. Can you, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I uh, wanted, wanted you to share with, um, with everyone, uh, what made you decide to inquire or travel with us to uh, Ghana? beyond just the other people that were doing tours? Well, you know, as I told you before, I have a, I have a scheduled trip to Ethiopia, but I've always, been, that's more of a business trip. And so I'll be working for the two weeks that I'll be there, but my aim was to travel to Africa and just learn more uh, from a recreational point of view and, and also fitness. And um, when I saw your information on Ghana, uh, you know, I became very, very interested. And so I'm, I'm in the learning phase um, to learn everything I can about the trip uh, for now and appreciate your educational calls and everything and all of the uh, pre-preparation um, materials that you are providing. So I'm planning to make the trip. I probably won't make it this year because, you know, that would be too close. We're, we're actually going to Ethiopia in November. So um, 
uh, next year is when I'm really planning to go. But all of this information is helping me tremendously. So I, I want to thank you for it. Absolutely, and I appreciate you joining the call because whether you're looking to go next year or this year, it's um, you know it's 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 a culture of information that's going to be new to everyone. So the better you the you know, the, the earlier you can get into it and and connect with the details, the better it is and the clearer it is. So so definitely uh, thank you for sharing that. So uh, everyone, we're gonna uh, close. So appreciate everyone's uh, energy. And if you need to talk with me at any time, so give me a call. We can talk one on one and go through anything anytime. Just one, you know, we just try to do a conference call every, um, you know, at least uh, every four to eight weeks, to where it's just open for questions and have an open floor of uh, details. So, but beyond that, um, for those who are shy and just rather talk one on one, you can call me any You can call me anytime. That's not a problem. So. Everyone, you take care, enjoy your night, and to all the mothers, uh, happy Mother's Day again, and we'll reconnect with everyone. Thank you so much, Romani. Thank right. you. All right, okay. take care. Thank you.